Hi, not three men on the blog this week, no FMQs this week. Mm. Um, our partner in crime has decided to go south to visit family. So it's just Stuart Lockhead and Norrie Stuart. And we thought we'd have a chat about... Um, the big issues. Universal human, human benefits. Human benefits. As uh, Kenneth Roy uh, called them in a, in a letter today. I think there's been a stushy ever since Joanne Lamont first mentioned uh, a something for nothing culture here in Scotland, which I think was a mistake, but certainly was a big part of what she had to say about how um, the welfare system runs in Scotland. There's been a, a fuss about it ever since. It's, I mean, the, the question is, for me, do you have an inclusive society where even millionaires get a free bus pass? I don't think it's a bad thing. They're not going to use them anyway, are they? Well, wouldn't it be good if uh, millionaires got on a bus? Yeah, they might actually meet some people other than their um, flunkies. And spend some time amongst the, the plebs, to <laughs> quote a certain Tory MP. Mitchell, I think his name was. Um, no bad thing. Inclusive society, a society where everybody gets to meet everybody else. You know? Well, like on the golf course or in the yeah. new club. Well, no, you need to sit in a doctor's surgeries to find out a &E. what, what the best cures are. I mean, I'm sure that rich people want to be cured as well. It is, and I don't know if they're particularly rich people in the doctor's surgery, but I must admit it occurs to me when I'm sat there in the doctor's surgery that uh, there are people there from all walks of life, goodness knows, and they don't. And it, you can notice people that don't even speak English because they're yeah. having problems at the counter and all kinds of things. Yeah. Well, look, um, Robin Calpine, writing on behalf of the Jimmy Reid Foundation, certainly took exception to what Joanne Lamont had to say on universal human benefits. And um, he describes basically a situation where the companies like ITOS, A4E, um, perhaps even the famous G4S, Serco, all these companies that, major in, international companies that get privatised contracts. The more the, that um, government services privatised, the more these companies do well. And basically these companies are constantly lobbying for the privatisation of every government contract. Well, I mean, and the interesting aspect of that is I believe ATOS has just given subcontracted the NH NHS in Lanarkshire to do their work, ATOS's work, for 22 million. That's for reviewing, yes they've subcontracted, they obviously got a bad press all over Britain and so somewhere, they've just, someone somewhere has decided to give, to subcontract the work for reviewing the disability, the disabled in Scotland for whether they're fit for work or not, to the Lanarkshire Health Trust. Which, I mean, let me think about this. Tories want rid of extra management layers in the NHS. Mm -hmm. So what, in fact, they've done with ATOS is privatised the management layer. Yep. So, I mean, bleh, it defies logic. You well, know. well, let's run through the different words. At the end of this article, Robin McAlpine identifies as uh, what, uh, what's going on. If we mention these words, you'll get a picture of what the issues really are. Affordability. It's always about accounting for expenditure. It's never sustainable whether the inevitable reality is demographic change, increased uptake of services, austerity, whatever. Nothing can ever be afforded. Even although we've been successfully paying for it for the last 40 years. Bravery. Oh no, that is a word from Yes Minister, isn't it? You've got to be brave. Um, I think there's a word in there not mentioned, actually. Radical. Radical has, was stolen by Thatcher and all her cohorts to mean let's move to lurch to the right. Free. Um, you would never talk about free health care instead of the NHS, so why free care for the elderly? Mm -hmm. Free school education. Um, I like go, go to the one at the bottom, of course, something for nothing. I mean, it, of course it's not something for nothing. It um, it's, comes from taxes, it's all paid for, it's just an attack on welfare, it's a complete import, importation from basically far-right politics, American in particular. Benefits, that's to conflate the welfare state with personal benefits for the poor. 
Um, <laughs> Pex, the inversion of po right, populism. That is used by populists to attack non-populists. Populism has nothing to do with popularity, but means setting one part of a population against the other. So you set the poor against the rich, or the rich against the poor. Uh, in Scotland you set the um, loyalists against the uh, Catholics, the, the West against the East. Yeah, and it's all about division. And as long as you're fighting each other, you're not looking at who the real enemy is. I'm beginning to sound like a 1970s communist. Oh, well, that's not a surprise. <laughs> I like, um, I think, to, to, to relate the issue or issues of this article on behalf of the Reid Foundation to what I read this morning about Kenneth Roy, who writes the Scottish Review, a much respected independent online weekly journal with sometimes two or three publication dates. Sometimes Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, he usually publishes something. He tries to, he's an experienced old hand, has been in Scottish, a Scottish journalist and editor for a long, long time, and he tries to publish something that's a bit different from what most people can read on, on the web. But he did, he stuck in this extra word, it's not universal benefits, it's universal human benefits. And um, he, was, he was quite angry, exercised as they say, about the, hun the, the hundred leading creatives writing to Creative Scotland complaining about what's going on in Creative Scotland and how desperately awful it is for Scotland. He can't, well basically what he was saying was, he, to start with, he can't see how that's <laughs> in any way is comparable to an attack on hu universal human benefits, which affects people's lives and their ability to, to function and all the rest of it. And um, and, and the, the running of Creative Scotland, which he himself has quite clearly criticised ever since it was before it was even founded. So, so the, um, I like that word, universal human benefits. Well, I, I think that's that underlines the position I would take, which is diametrically opposed. I don't think we should have less universal benefits. I think we should have more. I think public transport should be free, just like health. It should be free. More people would certainly use it if it was free, and there would be um, less use of cars. Which has to be a benefit to the green agenda. Not, I'm not particularly strong on the green agenda. I leave that to people who know more, more about it. But it, it appears to me the more <laughs> free stuff, the more stuff that can be paid free for. Free at the point of use. Well, yeah, but the more stuff that can be paid for by tax the more cohesive that creates the society. Well, that is another aspect, of course, of it. I mean, if you, if the, the wealthy, those who could afford to pay for the, uh, their benefits, their welfare, their services, so we say, um, are also able to get health services free, then um, they will feel part, more part of the same society. Whereas if, if, the, if benef welfare benefits are only there for the poor, then the, well, most, the, Leslie the quality Riddick's, will go down. Leslie Ruddock's point about that is a strong point. If the services that were delivered as benefits were of the highest possible standard, i.e. could compete with the private sector in standards, delivery, like quality... Education, health. In other words, we shouldn't have private hospitals, we shouldn't have private schools. Well, I mean... They're bad in principle. Basically, what that would then mean is that rich people wouldn't have to pay twice. They would pay in their taxes for a system that was quality. They wouldn't then have to go trooping off to get private insurance for health care. Or pay for private schools. Or pay for private schools. There may well be an argument, and well, let's just say it, about snobbery, about wanting to send their children to schools where children like them from their background are. Because, I mean, I, I know from my own experience in Edinburgh, there is an old boy network. But the old boy network doesn't simply apply to people who have money. There's a political old boy network. There's a media old boy network. You know, every sphere in life has its own networks. Why are we surprised that there's, you know, an old boy network that runs around merchant and fee-paying schools? <laughs> of course there is. You know. Do we sound like old hand socialists? Oh, I think so. I think so. I, I have to admit, I mean, um, our favourite 
Labour councillor sent both of us to publications this week and I was really amazed that the language being used is 60s, 70s troll. And, uh, you know, I mean... It does seem to be um, without any rationality. It's without any hope of ever being implemented by anybody, let alone here. That, well, the, the, the problem for me was not about what they were hoping to achieve. It was basically all about progressive taxation, which, you know, I've always agreed with. However, it's the usual story. Let's stay in our little castle, talk about it, shout from the, from the, the top of the tower, we want this, we want that, with no methodology of implication. They, they can't, they have no way to make it happen. And no Westminster government is going to go down the road they want. That's true. So why don't these socialists support uh, the idea of an independent Scotland? Because they think it's diametrically opposed to internationalism, which it isn't. Well, that's another issue. We could a British it. socialist can still be an internationalist. Why can't a Scottish yeah, socialist? Well, that, that's a good point. You're, that is the stumbling block for an awful lot of the uh, socialists or, um, supporting a British. The thing is that they're supporting a British state. This is the this is the, they have this huge hypocrisy to, to bury somewhere in their heads. They they don't realise they're they're, they're, sh they're supporting a British nationalism. But they. Buy, they buy into the elite view that there is some sort of power base worth having by being part of the British state. It's more power, It's going to be more powerful than the Scottish well, state. Well, it, it's effectively like saying we should, we should be members of NATO because it gives us more clout. We should be part of the European Union because it gives us more clout. We should have nuclear we should, swapping weapons of mass destruction because it gives us more clout. We should be America's best pals so we can go and blow up people in foreign countries with them. They'll give us more clout. I haven't noticed any of this clout in actual practice. The reality is we, you know, we're, we're just the appendage America drags out in support every time it needs us. But Apparently Denmark is actually uh, uh, more of an alloy than Britain by all accounts. So they've, I hear. they've slightly, I didn't realise that, but they've always turned out even quicker than Britain for every war, but I'd like to see the, the facts, but that, somebody said that this week, so that'd be interesting to look the, up. The, the Danish foreign policy still looks to Germany as the threat. That's what I read too. It's a bit too close to Germany to. But then again, Germany hasn't tried to include Switzerland and uh, Austria for quite some time. <laughs> well, I mean, it's only a couple of generations. Give them time. Okay. Give them time. All right. Well, they, shall we um, include in today's discussion? Where on earth is this agreement between Westminster and Holyrood on this referendum? Apparently it's been announced that the refer <laughs> agreement on the referendum, according to David Mundell, Mr. David, yes, David Cameron, and even Reuters, um, Huffington Post, the New York Times, the whole world has now told us that the agreement has been reached, but not according to Alex Salmond. So I kind of believe Alex Salmond. Well, I, I think the point is that there is a stumbling block over the money because there are funding three political parties plus the Better Together campaign. That's four different entities. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Three political parties in what country? In, in the Scotland. United Kingdom or in Scotland? Well, it'll be the United Kingdom. No, well, there's sort of because I think the Greens actually might have something to say about that. Well, the, what I'm saying is there'll be four against, four for the no vote, the Greens, the SNP, and the Yes campaign for it. See, it all depends how you define and the things, have, doesn't it? And the Greens have no money. Yeah, but it all depends how you define things. You know, if, it, if you define it, define things in terms of um, your vote, your UK vote in a European election, in which case the PMP get to have a shout. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what there is. Do you think there's? A, do you think that's where the dispute lies? Well, it, it's about finance. Yes, it's but, about. All right, but why has London? Why? Why have they gone ahead and said there is agreement if there isn't? Isn't Andy going to because, get on their faces? Well, no, no. They're saying there's an agreement because the whole world thinks there is an agreement now. They made the announcement. So if Alex Salmond, if this financial thing is a serious stumbling block to him and he does not sign an agreement, he's a baddie. It's a negotiating tool. We've announced the agreement, the agreement's there. Why is Salmond not signing it? So they'll go back to the sand. Salmond doesn't really want a referendum. 
And well, that, uh, is a, that, is a, that is a small school of thought. There are one or two people well, we could name. No, but that's what the government will be. Alex Salmond is standing in the way. Alex Salmond is blocking this. The SNP don't really want that. Just, I don't know. In fact, they won't say the SNP. They will continue to say Alex Salmond. Yes. So that it, it's a ploy. It gives them a tool in their bag that possibly they didn't have So before. the question arises, come Monday, when David Cameron's going to be apparently in Scotland and apparently meeting Alex Salmond, will there be an announcement afterwards? I would imagine there'll be a protocol that says this has to be dealt with, if it isn't dealt with by then. But remember, Nicola Sturgeon's dealing with it, Michael Moore's dealing with it, and I have to say I've been fairly impressed with Michael Moore, who was quoted as saying there should have not been no announcement because there was not a full agreement. Um, so, they didn't speak to Nicola Sturgeon, they didn't speak to Michael Moore, and they're the two that are negotiating the agreement. Fair enough. You know? Um, and you're looking at a Tory party that failed to mention the Liberals on air at all, their coalition parties, during their whole conference. Well, certainly David Cameron didn't mention them once. Well, I, I can't remember one mention, and I watched as much of it as I could. So... Didn't that, wasn't that painful? Well, it was hilarious. I really thought, I mean, this man, he had actually said... Which man? David Cameron? David Cameron actually said, I'm not going to, I'm not here to apologise for privilege. I'm here to spread it. Now, how can you spread what is by defi it, definition... An elite. An elite. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. You know... I mean, the, the whole thing was to get the party behind him, whoop, 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 whoop. Um, you know, I'm a good guy, we don't tell lies, we'll, we'll defend the National Health Service. Yeah, but what's worrying is the way it's presented by our so-called mainstream media. You know, you, uh, even the Matthew well, Wright show this morning, I, which I, is, he, he can be quite satirical, you know, satirical, um, was saying, well, you know, the, the question on the bottom of the screen was, has, um, was it a great speech by Cameron? And it's like, no. It was a much better delivered speech than Ed Miliband. Oh, definitely. Definitely was. Um, but did anything change because well, of this no, speech? No, there was no content to it. No. You know, it was just underlining Tory, right-wing Tory well, values. We're basically yeah. back to, um, wasn't it, what television show always had Tony Blair as the reverend of St Albans, always standing there in the pulpit, fulminating some satirical TV show? Because essentially that's all Tony Blair ever was. You know, we're being sucked into this celebrity culture where somebody can stand up and tub thump like a good old-fashioned minister. It's as if we haven't got any books, any Bibles even. It's like going way back to the Middle Ages. As long as this person's got charisma and can, and can look straight at the camera and persuade the public that, oh, well, don't you look gorgeous and don't you sound wonderful? Here, here is a good example. Ruth Davidson. Babe Ruth. Right. Babe Ruth. Thirteen percent. Sorry. Twelve. Twelve percent. Households in Scotland apparently the only ones that pay taxes. Are, are net contributors. So eighty-eight percent of the Scottish population do not contribute. And she repeated it, did she not? Now I'm sorry. I'd like to meet these twelve percent because they must be loaded. And they must be livid. <laughs> <laughs> Loaded and loaded. But lo and behold, if you take her formula and you take it into England, the percentage is 13. Oh dear. And that's only because the 1% that own the whole of Britain live in London. Uh, but Otherwise the one it would be about 9. Oh well. I just realised that that's a good idea. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I, I mean, it's stunning. I mean, what, I, She's a politician. She's a leader of the Tories in Scotland. And somebody hands her a piece of paper that says 13%, sorry, 12%, 88%, try again, of the Scottish population do not contribute. Oh, and by the way, Ruthie, you're one of them because you're paid out of the public purse. I mean... Oh, and apparently uh, she's come under attack from two leading lights in the Tory party, including Forsyth. Lord Forsyth. 
Well, he didn't attack her. He, he called it unfortunate. <laughs> and who else? Somebody else to, also from the Tories. Not a, oh well, hey ho. So what will happen now is Scotland will get its independence. The 12% that contribute will all move to Shetland and ask for their independence. No way. Scotland will go down the tubes and Shetland will be the richest country in the world. I think we're missing out something here. We're forgetting that the richest don't actually pay any tax at all. So they won't appear in the figures. Uh, well, that's okay because they vote Tory. Okay. Well, thank you.